Right. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about the uh, the art of hunting rabbits at night and how it's progressed over the years and basically where we're up to now uh, as regards equipment and also try and offer up a few little helpful hints uh, based on my well 40 odd years experience of hunting rabbits at night um, with the various um, progressing forms that have been used so go right back to the beginning so when i first started out <clears throat> lamping rabbits that's literally what it was you had a 12 volt uh, wet that's lead acid um, motorbike battery um, and some sort of spotlight um, the very early ones were sort of modified car spotlights and then eventually um, the security light type things became available quite massive great big things um, there was no leds in them days it was um, either a normal bulb or if you were lucky uh, on the later ones a halogen bulb and you could always recognize at shows lurch shows um, the ardent lampers because they always had one side of their coats full of holes and corroded away because they were proper lead acid batteries um, so as you were climbing over fences and gates going over rough terrain bending down to pick up court rabbits or whatever the lead used to leak out the battery and uh, eventually it'd eat its way through whichever side you were carrying the battery on and people tried all sorts of ways around this um, plastic one litre containers cut in half um, wooden boxes padded out with plastic and whatnot but it always got through eventually um, and it has to be said it was quite effective um, the only thing with the air gunning was it that was tended to be a two-man job uh, because you'd have one one of you would lamp uh, because the gear was quite heavy because you imagine lugging around a 12 volt motorbike battery it's quite heavy and the lamps were really big and bulky as well um, aside from carrying the rifle and anything you shot so it was a two-man game one of you would lamp one of you would shoot and then me and my mate used to swap around and at that time he was using a sharp and over um, pump up air rifle and i was using a webley vulcan um, or my famous bow sport um, for shooting and you've also got to remember that the early scopes weren't particularly brilliant there was no such thing as illuminated reticules when we first started out with these things so hence the lights had to be really bright because you to pick out the crosshairs on the target, it had to be really bright. Um, I must admit, most of my very early lamping was done with lurchers. And I'll just show you a really old photograph of myself when I was a lot younger and uh, one of my uh, half cross collie ground lurchers. And in those days, I had quite a following. I used to write for a uh, a monthly magazine on a regular basis I had a monthly uh, slot in a magazine um, all about lamping with lurchers um, and I always preferred the half cross collie greyhounds and I'll just show you a picture and that believe it or not is me and you can see the little wooden box that had the lead acid uh, 12 volt motorbike battery in it and the dirty great big um, lamp and my collie ground and as you can see standard kit then was just a pair of jeans and waxproof jackets the era of the uh, really nice waterproof um, modern sort of quiet textile type things hadn't really arrived at that day um, so it was all waxproof anyway eventually um, the uh, acid-free um, sealed batteries uh, came out for motorbikes and these were much better because they didn't leak it was a complete sealed unit didn't leak and these made life a lot better because they were also smaller um, and a lot lighter so that meant then you could put one in your pocket and wire up um, a smaller lamp uh, a more powerful lamp onto your actual rifle so then it became a one-man job you could actually go out 
with your lamp strapped to your gun, strapped on top of your telescopic sight, and someone wearing lots of Heath Robinson devices around at the time, and one of these small um, acid free batteries in your pocket. Because they did weigh about half what uh, the old style lead acid batteries weighed. Um, and that changed again. That was another sort of advancement in the shooting field. The fact that it suddenly became from a two man job down to one man and you could do it yourself. And then that's obviously changed again in recent years because now you can buy uh, self contained, um, really powerful torches that run off LEDs, little LEDs, um, that you can mount on your rifle. So you can still go lamping, only now it's like a little small torch and um, the mountains are really tailored for your telescopic sight and the illuminated reticules help as well. So that's still one form of hunting. You can still go lamping now and use that method. And the advantage of that is it's really cheap, it's really convenient, and it's fairly easy to stick one on your scope and then take it off. So you, know, you, you don't have to have a dedicated night scope or whatever. You can swap them around so you can leave your scope, your favourite scope on your rifle and just strap them these little torches on. Really good. The disadvantages are the same as it's always been. Rabbits aren't stupid. And whilst the first few times you go lamping with a torch, you may get spectacularly good results. It doesn't take them long to realise that that bright light shining around the field means danger and they're off. Um, and you can try red filters and I've tried that in the past. I used to try it when I had the lurches. And to be honest with you, it didn't make that much difference. I didn't think so anyway. But there are people that say it does, but personally, I don't think it makes much difference. Um, so that's one of the disadvantages of lamping is the fact that it's, it scares the prey. Also, if you're shooting in some areas where there's lots of housing around you, you know, golf courses or around, you know, farm buildings where there's houses near to it, it also creates a bit of disturbance and it can be a bit upsetting for neighbours or a bit worrying when they suddenly see a huge spotlight flicking around the fields in the middle of the night. So that's the other reason that it doesn't always find favour. So after the lamping gear, after all that had gone past, eventually um, into the air gunning and the shooting um, arena started to creep um, image intensification night sights. Now these have a little tube inside and basically it bounces the available, any available light around in the dark from the moon or the stars or whatever uh, and ex exaggerates that light intensifies it within this little tube and they came in various generations you had generation one generation two generation three i think they're up to about generation four now um but they all work in roughly the same way and they all gave this sort of green um sort of green with slight sort of black speckly bits on it image and they were pretty good to be fair you know the image quality was okay the generation one ones weren't particularly brilliant and they tended to be ex-military gear. So they were very, very heavy and very big and very bulky. I remember the very first one that I got was a Russian one um, and had it mounted on a BSA R10 and it weighed a ton. It probably weighed more than the rifle. And it was a huge thing, great big chunk of metal sat on top of it. Um, and they also needed an awful lot of extra illumination because the very early ones didn't come with their own illuminations and they needed a lot. So you needed a big IR torch bolted onto it as well. So the whole combination ended up being very big, very heavy and fairly unwieldy. Obviously, as time progressed, they got smaller, lighter and a bit more compact, but they were still quite big, quite unwieldy because the image intensification tube itself but it is quite a reasonable sized piece of equipment, let alone the scope that you put it into. So that was the image intensification stuff. And it was it was a quantum leap from lamping. Um, when they first came out, they were, they were just like something from a different world. It was like, wow, you know, you can go out in total darkness, just a little red infrared a torch strapped to the side of it. So unless someone's standing right in front of you, you can't be seen. Um, and they were brilliant, you know, they were. Everyone thought they were brilliant. They were dead expensive, but the price obviously came down. But to start with, they were really expensive, but they were really good. And then 
The next phase was the infrared um, LED camera type sights. Um, now these come in two basic forms. There's one where you clip the sensor onto the end of your telescopic sight and you have a flat screen that sits above it. And it's, this gives a head up type shooting sort of style. Or they were the first type to come out. And then after that, they integrated them into actual sites. So you had like the ATNX sites, um, and now there's a whole plethora of them. You've got um, Yukon photons. They were one of the first ones that came out. Um, you've got the parts, um, 007s, 008s, and 008 LRFs. You've got the Wraith, um, there's Yukons, there's other photons. There's loads of them now. There's a whole mass of these LED, um, liquid crystal display, uh, infrared camera type sites available. And the advantage of those is that some of the later ones have now got um, a day function, so you can use them in the daytime. Now some still give black and white in the day, like the uh, the, fo uh, the uh, Yukon Photons, the XTs and the RTs. Um, but some of them now, like the ATNX sites, the PARDs, during the day, they give a full colour display and at night it's still black and white. And the full colour display has come on leaps and bounds since the early versions. The new ones have all got high definition um, screens, um, so the colour um, rendition is brilliant, the clarity is really good and, and they're really nice. The image quality in the day and at night is really good. So now instead of having to, like you used to have to do in the old days, have a dedicated night site and then your um, telescopic site or a lamping kit strapped to your rifle. You can now put one of these sites on and use it in the day black and white and use it at night and I mean use it in the day full colour, use it at night black and white. So there's no need to swap around. You can have the one site and that's it. And also the size and weight of them has plummeted. This little part scope I've got on here is tiny. Very light, tiny, probably weighs about the same as a HFT telescopic site. It's really small, really lightweight. They've got most of them, if not all of them, have now got uh, self-contained IR units. And uh, the fuller features now, they've got onboard video recording, uh, different uh, parameters, different uh, reticules. You know, you can have multiple setups in them as well. So you can set up at 20 yards, press a button and it switches up to a setup at 30 yards. Some of the more advanced ones have even got laser range finders on them, like this one has. And the really advanced ones have got laser range finders that also, um, once they sense the range, will um, adjust your reticule automatically to compensate for that. Now, that's a massive leap. These things are incredible. I have shot so many rabbits as part. It's unbelievable. I've only had it a while, but it's absolutely brilliant. This setup here is superb. I was out last night um, filming some usage for the uh, the thermal. That will come to in a minute. But I was out last night, and the loads of rabbits out last night. There was a little bit of breeze, a little bit of light rain in the air, and it's perfect really for light, night shooting. And I shot four with this rifle, so really happy. This thing, this setup here is superb. So the next evolutionary step is thermal. Now thermal, it has to be said, is still very expensive. Um, thermal kit is still dear. Uh, thermal night sights are very dear. Um, you're talking a couple of grand for a thermal night sight. So they're very expensive still, the thermal night sights. But the thermal spotters, have come down considerably. And not only have they come down, but the quality has gone right up. Now this thing is superb. The, the only problem with these is at any sort of range, the only problem with the, the, the um, infrared camera type things, the LCD screen type things, any kind of range, you can struggle a bit to make it out. Um, and you're reliant sometimes at long range on the eye shine of whatever you're shooting. With the thermals though, even at quite long range, the uh, target acquisition, even if you can't see their eyes, target acquisition is reliant on their body heat. And these things are brilliant. You can pick rabbits out in the dark 
way, way, way out, way further than you can pick them out one of these. Um, and also they don't have to be facing you and you can pick them out in fairly roughish grass and whatnot as well. You know, it doesn't have to be bowling green flat um, fields to pick them out. You can pick them out at range and quite rough cover. And what I do, the way I use this is, as soon as I get to a gate or a field that I think's gonna have rabbits in it, I put this on, scan around, pick out where they are, and then decide a plan of action, i.e. where I'm gonna to go to to get the nearest shots at the target. And I'll get myself into position, and only then will I turn this site on to acquire my target, because that's the other thing with these. The battery life is it's quite good, but it's not brilliant. But on these, the batteries last a lot longer. So you can really take your time to scan around all over the place with one of these and do every field, every bit of ground you come to easily. And it's a simple case, it's just a quick scan. So that's how I do it. I scan with this first, pick up my targets, see where they are, get myself into position, and then bang that on when I'm ready to start shooting. And it's proved devastatingly effective. The other thing is, the other handy thing with these night with these thermals is picking up your quarry because quite a few times unless you want to start shining a head torch around to try and find whatever you shot it's quite easy if you're just relying on trying to find them in the dark with one of these as soon as you shot one and it loses that eye shine if it's in any sort of longish grass they can be quite difficult to find with the thermals though the body heat is retained for at least an hour um, and I've shot some like two hours and gone back and they're still glowing like, like mad in the dark. So these will pick them up much, much better. And these will also pick them up if you're unfortunate enough to shoot one that's lying up against the base of a hedge and it jumps up in the air in its death throes and kicks itself into the hedge. Or rolls down a ditch or anything like that or kicks itself into a, uh, a thistle bed. These will find them. These won't. You'll struggle like mad to find them. This, and you'll even struggle like mad to find um, sometimes with a torch but one of these it's dead easy I have not shot a rabbit and not put it in the bag since I bought this I found every single one it's brilliant it really is it makes life so so much easier so that's the thermals now the thermal night sights again really good but very very expensive I'm talking very very expensive they really are dear um, so there you go so that's the sort of evolution of the night sight hunting stuff now when it comes to the best weather to hunt in when i was like, running my lurchers we always used to wait and pray for a really dark really windy night preferably with a tiny bit of drizzle in it because on those sort of nights the rabbits are going to be way out and they're not going to hear you coming the ground's going to be nice and soft because a bit of drizzle makes the ground a bit softer. Good, strong, screaming wind muffles any sound and any scent. And it lets you get really up close to the rabbits that you're, uh, you're lamping. Now, obviously, with an air rifle, some of those things still count. Um, but obviously, you don't want the sort of gale force winds that we used to love uh, when we were running the lurches because... Trying to shoot in a gale with an air gun is quite difficult. So really, you want a bit of a breeze. A really still night makes life difficult. But if there's a little bit of a breeze, then it's much better because you can head into the breeze and it'll kill your uh, kill your footfall. And I've also found a tiny little bit of drizzle or just after a little bit of drizzle. Because remember, rabbits in the wild don't drink. They don't go to streams or puddles and ponds and drink. They only do that when there's a really severe uh, drought. They get all their moisture from dew on wet grass and from moist grass. So when there's been a bit of rain, a little bit of drizzle, and they're coming out, they're loving it because it's there's moisture. The grass is nice and moist and they sate their thirst that way. Um, and obviously you don't want any moon. Um, really bright moonlit nights are a bit of a no-no because you do get some where you can even see your own shadow. And again, they'll see you coming on a night like that. Um, so you're better off on a really dark, 
if you're doing it with the air gun, really dark, breezy, little bit of breeze, and possibly a little bit of a uh, little bit of rain in the air, or just after a little bit of rain. And you should find there'll be plenty of rabbits out and about for you to get close and hopefully shoot. The other thing that's a difficulty at night, obviously, is range finding. Because it's not so much, it's not so bad with a lamp because you get an idea of the depth of field if you're lamping. Um, so you can gauge the range more accurately. But when you're looking through one of these scopes, it, be it an image intensification tube one or a uh, LCD screen one, there's no, it's a flat image. There's no depth of field. So it's very, very difficult to judge range, which is why some of them now come fitted with uh, laser range finders. Now, if you've got one that has not a laser range finder, you will find it difficult to pick up range. It's really hard at night to know. So it's always worth what I do if I've got a new shoot I've never been to before and I'm going to go night shooting on there. I have a really good reconnaissance of the place. Um, and if you go in the day and have a look around, you get a feeling of where the rabbits are going to be and you can pace yourself out to different objects. So, you know, if you find a little warren where there's loads of activity in front of it and there's a gate 30 yards away, you know at night if you go and stand by that gate, any rabbits that are out on that spot where you've just recognised are going to be 30 yards away. And sometimes on really long hedgerows where it's very difficult to get any sort of field because they're just, it's just a long hedge. In the past, I've put little strips from any gateway or a gap in a wall or whatever or a handy tree to lean on that I'm using as a rest. I've actually put little tiny strips of um, uh, silver foil at 10 yard intervals uh, on the fence. So if you look at the nearest one to you, it's 10 yards, 20 yards, 30 yards, and you can read out across, along the hedge and get an idea of how far your target is. And silver foil picks up really quite well on these, um, these LCD screened um, detectors because the IR reflects off them. And they show up nice and bright, a bit like a rabbit's eye. So silver foil is quite handy. Just put a little strip of it around the fence at 10 yard intervals from where you think you're likely to be taking your shot. And that's why it's always handy to go and have a quick reconnaissance. And not only that, from a safety aspect, it does pay to have a quick look. Um, and I say, because I know that, because I once broke my ankle um, lamping with a lurcher, not with an air rifle, but lamping with a lurcher when I... Uh, jumped over what I thought was a small um, low wall into the next field and actually unbeknownst to me there was a sunken a very narrow sunken track between the two fields which I hadn't picked up in the dark so I jumped over the wall and uh, fell six foot into the sunken road and broke my ankle uh, it was a very painful four mile walk back home carrying a lamp a battery a load of rabbits and with my dog looking at me as if I was some sort of idiot so I would always recommend if you've got new permission or even old permission, have a damn good look over it before you go lamping. Make sure, or night shooting, make sure you know all the pitfalls, any potential hazards or dangers, because it is all too easy at night to, uh, to have an accident. It really is. You know, the amount of, um, I know I keep harping on about lurchers, but there were some you know, horror stories of lurchers being killed or injured, um, running into obstacles and also their owners falling or crashing into stuff. So, so it's always worth, before you go night shooting, go and have a look. Because not only that, at night it's also difficult to know where, you, where your safe backstops are. And I know it's only an air gun, but if the field opposite has got a load of horses in it or a load of lambs in it, and they have a tendency to lie up against a hedge and you're shooting rabbits at the base of the hedge, in the dark with one of these, you will not be able to see them through that hedge like you would in the day. Because the infrared um, illuminators on these, once they hit foliage, that's it. It kills them dead. It either gives you like a white out on the screen um, or you just can't see it. So when you're shooting at night, you really, really need to make sure that you know where you're going. Um, and if that adage of shooting only when you're sure is tenfold at night. Um, it really is. You do need to take extra care at night what you're doing. Um, because, you know, there's hazards out there 
and you need to know where you're going, what you're shooting and where you are. Um, so there you go. So if you've never been out night shooting before, some of this quality stuff now has never been at a more affordable price. Um, so I thoroughly recommend it. And if you've never done it and you are a rabbit hunter, then um, your bags will go through the roof. They really will. You will get much more at night, shooting at night. Um, it takes a bit of time to get used to it. Gauge, gauge and range, you need an LRF or like I say, know the territory well, so you know where all your different shooting points are, where the rabbits are likely to be, or mark it out with silver foil, and just make sure that you um, do a good reconnaissance first, so you know any potential hazards, not only for yourself, but for livestock as well. So, seriously, if you've never been night shooting, think about it, but do be safe and do take care. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.